Hi everyone, my name is Rory Neary and I'd like to show you today about how you can use bookmarking to tell a story within Power BI. The story that I'd like to tell you about is the voyage of Charles Darwin uh, in the HMS Beagle which took place um, in between 1831 and 1836. Um, I, I've uh, always been fascinated with the various discoveries he's made um, and uh, this would seem like a, a good opportunity to tell this story to everyone else. So um, I've opened up the PBIX file um, and in order to access the bookmarking piece you have to go to view um, the bookmarks pane and then you click view and you are good to go at this point. So we can see we're on bookmark one of 28. Um, the bookmarking names aren't really relevant at this point. You can't even change the names at the moment. I'm sure that will all change. So uh, we've just got a simple header sheet here and I'm just gonna talk through this a little bit like it's a, a presentation. So let's see how this goes. So all I'm gonna be doing as we go through is is clicking on the um, uh, on the the um, right hand button. So here we go. So yeah, as, as mentioned before, it took place between 1831 and 1836 um, and it took place on a ship called HMS Beagle. The, um, it sailed from Plymouth in 1831, 27th of December. Not sure if I fancy um, uh, going sailing on that sort of, sort of a day, but good luck to them. And, uh, and yeah, it was six, 6,003 pounds to build. Uh, and this is a diagram of the, um, the vessel itself. Um, this is a, a much closer uh, view of the, uh, of the vessel. Um, and you can see the various parts of the, um, of the ship and you know, where, uh, where, the, where the captain uh, would, have, uh, would have sat and so on. Um, so I'm not an expert on this, but um, yeah, it's quite nice to look through. So this uh, it was commanded by Captain Roberts Fitzroy, and he was a deeply religious uh, individual. Um, later in his life, he um, he really came to blows with uh, with Charles Darwin, even though. During the trip, he was just as avid a collector of uh, animals as uh, as uh, Charles Darwin was, um, and some of those animal and some of those specimens are, you know, kept at the um, Natural History Museum um, in London. So, um, and so, along with him, um, Charles Charles Darwin was uh, one of the uh, the naturalists on board. Um, with his role as, as collecting specimens um, whilst that uh, took place. The, the, the voyage was supposed to take two years, but as, as it turned out, uh, as we saw, it took uh, five years in, in total. So, um, but um, as we'll see, um, yeah, I mean, the, the purpose of the, um, the voyage was to survey the, uh, survey the coast of Lower South America. But um, I haven't got a map of that here, but it, it is absolutely, <laughs> it's riddled with, with, you know, absolutely tiny islands. And um, Fitzroy had to, you know, chart each of the, um, every nook and cranny of the, those islands. And his, and his maps were, um, were kept for literally hundreds of years um uh with, as as um you know as very good um navigational um uh, sources so um this is a a close up of the voyage that they took so they moved uh, they went from um plymouth uh, straight the way down to um uh i can't remember the name of the uh, the place anyway i'm sure it'll come back to me um and this is where they were the um yeah tierra del fuego um, and so this is the area that they were were um surveying at the time and they did spend an awful long time there 
well, obviously the trip, the uh, the voyage moved on round the coast all the way over to um, Sydney um, and then uh, round through to Cape Town, back over to um, uh, Bayer uh, and then all the way back to, it wasn't Plymouth it went back to, but we'll see that later on in any case. Um, so we... Uh, so yeah, he he um, he was very very sick on board the uh, the ship, um, uh, but as uh, as everyone knows, he it didn't it didn't put him off. Um, so uh, one of his one of his discoveries at the time was um, I think this was quite early on in the um, in the uh, voyage was um, this strip of land uh, this strip here, which is actually um, uh, it's Cape Verde, so uh, and it was uh, a line of shells, which was evidence that this would have been the seabed at one point. Um, and then obviously it uh, it sort of showed that the seabed could you know rise and fall over time, which um, helped him consider um, ideas around um, about geological change. Um, the other thing uh, I haven't mentioned it on here is that when he was there, he um, he also witnessed a um, the effects of a um, an earthquake in Chile and literally saw how the uh, the land itself moved <laughs> from a um, you know uh, from an elevation point of view. This this piece here was um, uh, was uh, was uh, where he discovered the remains of. Uh, some prehistoric beasts um, and and so we're sort of moving into a slightly more uh, in-depth um, area uh, of, of Power BI as you'll see in a moment uh, and the uh, he, he managed to find a megatherium which is a ground um, a, a large sloth um, pretty large in, in all fairness um, and they would have they would have lived um, uh, for a you know period about five million years and, and were extinct about ten thousand years ago, possibly because of man, but you know we don't know. Um, so what we have is a, a graphic here, which um, where we got some images uh, in relation to the megatherium, and this is the height chart. So if we can we can compare the height of um, the megatherium to a man, and that, it's it's a reasonable comparison. But actually, if we look at the um, the comparison of the weight, you've got uh, the megatherium here in at four tons uh, and a man in at uh, not an awful lot, um, 70 kilograms, uh, I, I guesstimated that at. Um, and I sort of go on to sort of compare how uh, the megatherium uh, compared to other uh, animals of its day. Now, actually, I did happen to forget that... Um, to, to click on the giant bear, but you can actually bring the giant bear in. And I think if I click on here, you can sort of see that you can start to interact uh, with the graphics whilst you run through the story, which I think is quite neat. Um, so running running further through the, the story, the, the Megatherium wasn't the biggest beast of its time. So you had the, um, you had the Mastodon, which was a... Um, Essentially, a forerunner to the to the elephant of today, uh, and then uh, the woolly mammoth, which was you know uh, an absolute uh, beast. Um, so I'm just going to move off there. So yeah, the woolly mammoth and the um, and the mastodon were the were the titans of the day, and that is an image of a yeah just a an artist's image of uh, of a mammoth. Um, so clearly we've jumped from uh, from one of the tiles onto here and we're going to move back to to the main story um so darwin was a was an avid collector it wasn't just birds that he collected there were all sorts of um uh things he um he <laughs> he was a collector of all all manner of of beasts and um you know and and if you do look through his history you can you find that he He's, he's even written papers on barnacles, which uh, I can't imagine um, getting terribly interested in. But, you know, that was clearly uh, the sort of guy he was. Um, so we'll just move on with this. 
Yeah, so he spent three years on land and the remainder at sea. So it was um, uh, so it was three years on land and 18 months at sea. So um, bless him, um, poor Cap Captain Fitzroy. He uh, he was the guy that was at sea for most of that time, um, which was a real challenge for him. Um, uh, and I think a little tip for him was that he he was a um, he developed the first forecasts uh, weather forecasts. Um, so, um, but he was a complicated chap as well. So it didn't return until the 2nd of October 1836 and returned into, uh, where are we now? It's, uh, I should know, it's Plymouth. Um, I think that may be where, yeah. Anyway, I, I can't re remember off the top of my head if that's where they actually set off from it anyway. Um, and this was uh, this is a an image of a um, let's see if we can let's see if we can focus on this one no we can't we can't go full screen on this but um, this is actually an excerpt from the Guardian of its day and and, and it was the uh, effectively an announcement by the uh, Royal Geographical Society about the return of of the Beagle and um, so there's all sorts of bits and pieces to do with that. Um, so uh, this is my you know kind of gets slightly philosophical uh, philosophical here um the uh, the voyage was very important in terms of darwin is and his later theories this was um something about the gala uh, the finches on um the Galas galapagos islands and and how they had different different beach shapes and how they evolved in order to there's a number of islands on the uh, in that sort of uh, around the galapagos and the various um, birds had developed beaks which would make them more suitable um, for each of the islands. Um, so uh, the, 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 this five-year trip inevitably sowed the seeds for um, his later works. So here's uh, Charles Darwin and um, and I like this idea. Um, I love fool's experiments. I'm always waking, making them. Um, uh, clearly, I'll never be as famous as Charles Darwin, but um, I like fool's experiments as well. So that concludes the um, my demonstration of the bookmarking um, facility within uh, Power BI. Um, I, I very much avoided um getting into something too financial i think that this was you know quite a, an interesting way of of telling the story so uh, thank you very much for taking the time to view this and uh do like the video uh, and do share it thank you very much bye